Kurt Lewis on the community chat. Again, thank you guys. Every week we always ask what topics do you guys want to talk about. We always want to talk about what you want to talk about because we've wasted so many good episodes. Mario and I just calling each other on the phone, just talking. Yep. And uh, we sometimes it's like screaming into the void. We record one day a week. We have no idea if you guys want to hear about this stuff. So it's good to know what you want. The community tab on YouTube hits us up for that. Uh, so thank you, Kurt. Yeah, anything and, you guys uh, want to know, that, yeah. the community tab's the way to go. Yeah, it's, you can just post on there. Whatever you need, we literally read like every single comment. So. Okay, I read every single comment. All right. Uh, so Kurt asks, based on where we're picking in the draft, uh, and with first rounders getting a fifth year extension, should we draft an offensive guard or a safety for, uh, what about depth and cost, uh, or do we train? So the bills before having... we get to this topic, Paul, we may have some first time viewers. Okay. Welcome to hashtag. First of all, second of all. First round picks get a fifth year extension. And the value of that fifth year extension is based on where you were drafted. So if you were drafted one, <clears throat> one through 10, you get the average of the top 10 players at that position for your fifth year option. Okay, that's very important. If you were drafted 11 through 32, you get the average of the third, at your position, the third highest to the 25th highest right. at your position. Right, and that, so that's, that's why a huge, huge difference. That's yeah. why when you hear references that we make on the show of the ele- the 10th pick being the fat chick pick, as all, and I, that wasn't me, that was him, okay? I've had a better moment. It's <laughs> because of the value of a, let's just say a guard at 10 versus 11 for the fifth year option, it's, it's massive. huge. It's, it's huge. massive. Especially with the cap now going down. So I just wanted to give you guys that little bit of, uh, um, a lot of you already know that, but that's a huge deal. And the fifth year option, people usually want to jump into the jump into the round for the fifth year option. Right. Well, I mean, I think Buffalo. The best example that we could probably give is Allen to Edmonds. Yes. Right. Yep. There's a there's millions of dollars of difference between Allen's fifth year and Edmonds' fifth year. Now, mind you, it's made even bigger because Allen's a quarterback and the salaries are gigantic for quarterbacks. But it does illustrate the point. Right? Yes. It really does. It illustrates the point. Um, all right. So with that possible fifth year option on the table, first round picks are very coveted. So what do you think Buffalo, you know, what, if you had to name a position, because I guess that's the crux of the start of the question. Uh, offensive guard and safety are mentioned there. I'm not really thinking safety is a thing. But again, I've kind of been along the line of thought that, like, I think the Bills do their homework. And let me put it this way. They're going to go back to the notes of that 2016 draft and be like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I know we drafted Deion Dawkins, but what did we have on Hassan Reddick? Hassan Reddick's a free agent. So he was 17? Because 18 was Allen. 19 was Oliver. 20, they traded for Diggs. So 17 so Dawkins was Dawkins. wasn't drafted in 16? 17. He was drafted with Milano and 17, Trey 18, White. 17, 19. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. I just want to make sure. I don't want... I don't need you to read another comment, but Paul, that was 2017. <laughs> Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick, You were right. very high. And I think, you know, he was a big target for people in that draft. Like, oh, the Bills need a linebacker. They're going to probably go after Hassan Reddick. They're really into Hassan Reddick. They visited him with him a bunch, and then they button-hooked everybody and drafted Deion Dawkins, who was in an off season altercation with Hassan Reddick where they both got arrested and boom we get Deion Dawkins out of the deal and then Matt Milano a few rounds later exactly right so but my point is that I I think a lot of people might look at linebacker or safety and I think linebacker gets filled through free agency I don't think safety is a thing for them in the first round okay I have two arguments about that point okay number one Milano was a safety number two Milano was not scouted by me. 
Nope. Whaley was, scout, or was scouting. Mm -hmm. So I think those are two very important points. If Bean had been there, probably, Reddick might have been drafted. Maybe. Who knows? Because yeah. Bean was a part of an organization that drafted a linebacker in the first round. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> like every damn year. They Jack were grabbing Thompson. linebackers. Yeah. But then they always had that old grizzly veteran that was always with the rookies or the second year. Anyway. I could see them taking a safety if they don't resign my life. Thomas Davis was like the old man on the porch in your neighborhood. He just yells at everybody. <laughs> his wisdom. But it is an interesting point because I could see them taking a safety that may be a little bit too big to play safety. But fast enough, too, if you need him. Are we really going to have the Kyle Duggar argument again? I thought we moved past the Kyle Duggar argument. Listen, he has been traded. And he has been forgotten. But we keep talking about Zay Jones. So I could talk about Kyle, Kyle Duggar for one more year. Because I think he would be awesome on this team. Point being is this. Milano was a safety. They transitioned him to linebacker. He did very, very well. He's going to get a nice little check this offseason. Okay? Might not be from the Bills, but he'll get a nice little check. Point is, you need that athletic freak next to Edmonds, I think. So if you get a safety, that could be a hybrid for you. He could play back. Think about it, though. Let's say you have, just for argument's sake, just for schematics, you got Hyde and Foyer up top, and you put, you draft a safety, okay? And then the guy's the quarterback's making his reads. He knows where the linebackers are. All of a sudden, Foyer drops down, Hyde shifts over, and that safety comes back. What is he doing now? You can't do that with Milano. No, you, you can't. You could do that with a safety and totally throw a wrench, which we haven't seen, into the offenses because this defense, as we've said seven million times, played together for 60 games. Right. <laughs> well, you got to change something, right? I, like, think, well, you're, I think naturally you're going to have to change something with this, with this draft. And because the salary cap is where it is, the draft is even the more best, important. The draft's the best place to go. Um, all right, so – where are you as far as what you think the Bills are going to do in the draft? Third round. Third round? Linebacker in the third round? I think they take a linebacker in the third round. Okay. All right. Because what? they're going to gain an extra third round pick by trading back from third. Oh. Okay, so you think the Bills are out at third? I think even though we make the counter argument that teams – Via Bill Polian, via Bill Polian, teams only have 15 to 18 first round drafts. Right. Tougher in a year where a lot of teams didn't play. Like yeah, very true. Yep. Okay, so if they have 15 to 18 players, not everyone's first round talent. So there may be a guy that slips through the cracks that teams want to jump in and get the fifth year option, like the question is stated. So it could work against the Bills where they're stuck at third, but I see them trading out of there. I see a team getting eager to get up there. Um, maybe Carolina, because Tampa Bay dra drafts after them. Oh, that's an interesting thought. But I could see the Bills getting out of there and um, and picking up an extra third, maybe an extra second the following year, depending on what the currency is at that point for trading back. Mm -hmm. And with that extra third, you pick up your safety. And maybe with the original third pick, third round pick, you pick up your guard. That's interesting. So... That's interesting. Um, okay, it's funny because I actually see this the opposite way. I think the Bills are going to trade up. You're going to trade up. I've traded up, yeah. And value value is value, right? Oh, yeah. So the Bills love to accumulate draft capital, right? We might see, with Milano leaving, we're, st we're going to start talking about compensatory formulas. Ooh. Milano's going to sign a top deal. So if the Bills are very careful with where they spend their money and they don't add as much as they lose... Yes. Then they're going to end up with draft pick. Not this year. If they're, if they're the following year, right? But, well, and, and you could trade those picks. That's right. However, and what Paul is talking about, as you guys know, when Tom, when Lawson and Phillip both got those huge deals, mm -hmm. the Bills were entitled to compensatory picks. However, because they brought in Butler, Jefferson, and Addison. Right. It, which now you're looking at cutting. Them out. Yeah. yeah. Which now you're looking at cutting. Yeah. Which, I mean. It is what it is. It is. Like, I get it. You know, I get it. Um, 
But I think that the Bills are going to look to trade up because value is value, Ooh. right? So you give up that third round pick, and you can go from thirty to twenty. You can give up give up a third round pick, go oh. from thirty to twenty. Just go. If there's a player that you like, just go get them. And that's one thing that I think Bean has shown the ability to at least have the conversation of, okay, it's our time, let's go. You know, and plus I think teams look to trade back now into those 30, 31, 32 when their boards get empty, right? So a team sitting at 20, their board may be empty. There might not be a single first-round player on there. Like, you know what, let's back down. That 30 is a great place to draft a quarterback if you're not really sure. It's a great place to draft a running back because you don't want to pay one, right? So having a running back on a fifth-year option is a great thing because they don't make anything anyway. You know, that's a great place to step back and grab those skill position players because wide receiver is baked. Um, you know, defensive end is baked. Um, quarterback is baked by that by that position. Like, there's some positions that are just gone. So don't, don't be victim to that, right? Don't be victim to the 30th pick. Leverage it. Go up and get what you want. If, you, if there's a linebacker you like, go get him. Give up the third-round pick. What do you care? What do you care? They've proven that they can find guys and develop. What do you, what do you care? You're going to find undrafted free, undrafted free agents will want to be in Buffalo now. Like that, we're talking into a whole new realm here. This is a totally different. It's a lot of. This is a totally different Buffalo than we've seen before because undrafted free agents, when they get a call from Buffalo, it's not going to be like, oh, it's Buffalo. It's like, oh wait, who called? <laughs> wait, Team wait, just won 13 Pardon? games this last Pardon? year. <laughs> You have to understand the prestige of the Bills outside of Buffalo is building. And you can leverage that currency in in the post-draft process. I think the Bills have the opportunity to do that, especially with so many teams that just didn't play, so many college teams that just didn't play this year. I think this is so tough, though, Bob, because we, we go on patterns a lot of times. Mm-hmm. He loves insurance policies. He loves having a backup for a backup. Yep. I mean, you had Naseki making, what, $6 million sitting on the bench all year. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's true. Well, you know, I think there's one thing we can agree on. Why do I feel like that meme of the guy like this? Hmm. You know, he's always pointing uh, at his head. I think right? there's one thing we you can agree on. You can't make bad draft picks if you don't have any picks. <laughs> <laughs> there are actually two yeah. things that we can agree on. Okay. Number one is that everybody should go to MrRogersHomes.com to make sure if they want to relocate to Arizona, they go hit up our man, Sean. That's a big one. Number two, I don't think Buffalo stays in third. And I think from what you oh, just no. said, I think you're probably Oh, no. Right. Oh, no. I don't think Buffalo stays I mean, you, you brought up something that's scary. They could get stuck there because of the limited amount of players. Mm-hmm. But you have the 30th pick. Not one guy is going to solve the problem. Right now. Well, I think, I think that's an interesting point, right? So think about this just for a second. Because there's a limited pool of players that you've actually seen play this year, yes. does the 30th pick get you more value than it used to? Because there's only so many players that you've seen this year. The half the draft class, nobody's seen, right? They haven't played. They couldn't play. So does the 30th pick, do you get more for that? Because, like, if you're trading down, do you get more for the 30th pick? Because there's only so, there's only a finite number of players that are draft eligible that have actually played. I'm interested in the big thing. Yeah, I'm super curious. You think the 30th pick garners more weight? Now that not as many players have played. I guess we'll have to go to the scouting department. Just saying, don't call Doug Whaley.